All right, in the wake of Hurricane Francine, there are plenty of precautions you need to take, especially if you are using a generator. State Fire Marshal Brian Adams is joining us now to talk more about what you can do out there to stay safe. Thanks so much for being with us. We appreciate it. Hi, Katie. Thank you. We appreciate you getting us on today. Yeah, uh, you know, we've heard this from fire official after fire official after the storm, before the storm. Generators are dangerous while they are great. So what are your top tips in order to try and keep people safe? We've all heard, you know, the most deaths happen after the storm. A lot of those are from generators. Yes, they are, Katie. And we appreciate the media being supportive of us getting our message out. So look, we want to make sure that everyone stays safe. Uh, if you're going to use a home generator, make sure that you have a carbon monoxide detector in your home on every floor. Do not place the generator in the home or near the windows or the doors. Uh, make sure that if you're going to refuel it, you refuel it when it's cool. Let it cool off for 15 to 20 minutes. Look, keep it away from those openings in those houses. And you're right. The statistics tell us that more people die after the hurricane passes and the aftermath those days after when we start using those generators. Uh, you know, there are so many questions that people have about using generators. It sounds simple when you say it in those terms. However, I feel like there's always a situation where somebody's got a question about it. Um, any idea where the best place to go for answers to those might be? For example, you know, so let's say my neighbor has a, has a generator set up too close to one of my windows. You know, um, any, any place where they can go to get more resources and information? You know, that's a call to your local fire department and ask them that questions. They're all on board with this message. Uh, we were able today to deploy 2,700 uh, CO2 detectors into the communities that were most affected by this. So those departments are all on board helping us get this message out. We all realize how serious it is, and we're just going to continue to try to drive the message home. So even though people are just now in the cleanup part of this recovery process, next comes construction. You oversee contractor fraud cases in the state. What should people be doing when they're deciding whether or not to hire a contractor, either for tree removal, for example, or all the way up to I have to replace, you know, the back of my house because a tree fell on it? So we don't regulate any residential properties. We don't do one and two family dwellings. There's a contractor board at the state that regulates that. We're strictly on the commercial side. Okay. Um, so, um, yeah, I guess I just was under the impression that you guys also did both. Um, okay. Uh, any recommendations for people on that front, though? I mean, I guess the same would hold for commercial as it would yeah, for residential. Yeah, you get a licensed contract to make sure that they're insured. You know, check all those boxes to make sure that you're using the right individuals. You know, there's going to be those scammers out there trying to trying to take advantage of people. It happens every hurricane. Okay. Thanks so much for joining us. We really appreciate you spreading your message and hope everyone out there stays safe, right? Thank you. Can help us uh, drive it home. We appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. Thank you. Thanks.